Hello guys, today we will talk about the most complicated topic in construction business. We will talk about septic. And I want to introduce you the best expert in this topic, Tom Reynolds. Hello, Tom. Hello, Igor. How are you today? Yeah, I'm fine. Good, you? good. I'm doing well. Tom, can you share, please, your experience and wisdom about this topic with our viewers? Yes, absolutely, Igor. Um, it's it's my opinion that a septic system on a property is the most important component that you have in a home. If you have a $5 million home and you can't take a shower or flush, then what do you really have? So it's a very important component. Um, the, the whole process starts where you would bring a machine and you would dig what they call profile holes. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna dig two holes about 50 feet apart where you want the drain field to go. Now what's going to happen is that you're gonna have an engineer or a registered sanitarian, they're gonna come and look in these holes and these holes are gonna tell a story about what the best type of septic system is to put in this particular ground. Because Central Texas varies so much. You can have everything from a very soft sandy loam all the way to very rocky soil. And there are different septic systems that can be installed depending on what you have in the ground here. So the first order of business is that you would have somebody dig the holes, you'd have an engineer take a look at that, then he would design the system, then all of that paperwork is turned into the county or the jurisdiction that has authority over this particular area. Uh, they would review the plans, make sure that it meets all of the guidelines and the rules and that it was designed properly. Once they do that, then they would issue you a permit to construct that is good for one year, and then you have the year uh, to install the septic system per the code. There's several inspections along the way to make sure that it's done properly and in accordance with the rules, and then you have the final product. Um, again, it's a very important component in, in your house. People are spending hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars for houses, and you're gonna spend anywhere from probably 12,000 up to 60, 70, 80,000 dollars for a septic system, depending on the square footage of the house that you have and how complicated the system is. Um, it's very important that things are done correctly and it's very important that things are maintained properly. You have to understand you're not on city sewer where whatever you drain down your sinks or you flush down your toilet, you never have to worry about again. In this particular instance, you are operating your own on-site sewage facility. So it is very important that it's done properly and it's maintained properly. The main components that you're gonna have of a septic system, and again, they vary. You have uh, systems that are all gravity, that don't have any pumps or anything like that. These can be rock and pipe systems. They can be leaching chamber systems. Uh, then you have more complicated systems, what they call a non-standard system. That would be uh, an aerobic drip or something along those lines. What that does is it actually has a treatment plant where it is going to treat the bacteria um, and then that is how the, the, the sewage process works. Instead of the sewage being sent to a, uh, uh, a sanitation system, uh, if you were in a neighborhood out here uh, on a property that requires a septic system, you're doing all of that treatment on site. And so those are the, the, the basic different types of uh, septic systems. How does a septic system work? A septic system is designed to uh, get rid of uh, and to treat the sewage coming out of a house or anything that is flushed and or uh, drain down the sinks. And so it, it, is, it is a treatment process and then it gets rid of the liquid, the affluent uh, into the soil is essentially how it works. Your basic components are, you're always gonna have tanks uh, and the tanks are sized based on the square footage and the number of bedrooms in the home. The size of the drain field is also sized on the square footage and the number of bedrooms in the, in the home and what the soil dictates how fast the soil can filter uh, that effluent. So that is essentially what the septic system is for. So to uh, give you some information about this particular site, um, this particular site was designed, the profile holes were dug and they got pretty deep profile holes and it, and it showed good soil. So it allowed them to design a gravity system where there would be no pumps, no alarms, no nothing like that. Unfortunately, where the profile holes were dug, it did not indicate rock in the drain field. And so we have already started this system. We've installed the first tank and the sewer lines and had started to dig the, the uh, trenches for the leaching chambers. That is when we discovered rock. Um, you cannot have rock in a drain field that has leaching chamber systems. It must be very soft soil 
and you've got to have two feet of soil below where the actual trench is. Now on this particular site, um, we found shallow rock. And so that did not allow us to build what we were going to build. So the solution in this particular instance, because we're up on a hill up here, um, we already had this tank installed. And so what we've done while we're waiting on the LCRA to reissue the permit is we went ahead and dug the other tank hole because we know we're going to have a pump tank. And this particular system is going to be converted from, an, uh, from a, uh, a leaching chamber gravity septic system to a drip irrigation system using the drip tech technology. Now, when you have a drip system, typically you have an aerobic tank, which is a, an aerobic treatment plant is what they call it. Uh, these things weigh about 19,000 pounds and they come on a truck that's about 44 foot long with a big knuckle boom crane on the back. And that lifts the tank off of the truck and sets it into the hole. But because of the difficulty in this particular job, we can't get a concrete tank up here. We're just going to add another infiltrator uh, plastic tank, and then we're gonna add the drip tech system into it. So what that is going to do is it's going to very, very finely filter the effluent coming out of the house. And then it's going to, there'll be a matrix of this half inch purple tubing, and it is going to drip over the entire drain field area. This will be, uh, this will all be cleaned up and leveled. Some sandy loam brought in, the tubing put on top of that, and then more sandy loam put on top of that once it's inspected, and then you would put grass on top of that. So basically it's going to water the grass out here, uh, and that's the system that we've had to convert this one to. So the only reason it's not done yet is because we're still waiting on the permit from the LCRA, and as soon as we get that, we'll be back at this job site to get it finished. So uh, to reiterate uh, about what type of septic system will go in your property, again, it starts with the profile holes that are dug, and then the engineer or the sanitarian will come over and they will look at that profile of the soil. They'll look down into the holes that you dug with a backhoe or mini X or whatever it was. And based on what they see there, that determines the best type of septic system for any particular property. So that, that is how the determination is made as to what type of septic system that uh, we get permitted and we install. Typical costs that are associated with building a septic system. You have uh, the profile holes that have to be done by a contractor. So somebody is gonna charge you anywhere from about 500 to $800 to bring a machine to your property and dig these profile holes for the engineer or the sanitarian to determine what type of septic system that you're going to have. Once the uh, engineer determines what the best type of soil or the best system to put in this particular soil, then based on the square footage of the house and the number of bedrooms, he will begin to design the system. Um, that will determine what size tanks that you have and what size drain field. Now, I will tell you, I've been doing this for 24 years. And let's say 20 years ago, um, your typical 2,500 square foot house uh, that had to have a septic system, they ranged in price from about 10 to $15,000. Um, I can tell you for sure that during the whole uh, COVID issue that we had in this country, prices have skyrocketed. Uh, fuel skyrocketed, all kinds of things. So concrete's gotten more expensive. Uh, PVC pipe has gotten more expensive. Um, so now you're looking probably eighteen to $25,000 for a septic system that's installed. Uh, and again, that's gonna de depend on uh, the size of the house and what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, for example, um, that 2,500 square foot house, that may cost you pretty close to $20,000 at this point. Uh, I have several homes that I have uh, built septic systems for in the Westlake area, and we're talking about 7,000 square foot up to 13,000 square foot homes, very, very large homes, large tanks, very large drain fields, a lot involved, and they can range anywhere from about 35 to $70,000. Uh, it just depends on how large the house is and how, uh, how many components and how large the septic system itself is going to be. So the processes of, uh, of installing a septic system, the way I prefer to do it, is that we will first find the, the sewer stub coming out of the building, okay? That sewer stub is going to determine the elevation of the tank because everything has to flow gravity to the tank. So what I like to do is I like to find this, the, the sewer stub coming out of the house. I will look at the plans, figure out where they have the, the tank oriented uh, from the house, and we try to follow the plans as closely as possible. Um, Everything always looks good on paper. It doesn't always come out that way out here in the dirt. Uh, but typically we would dig the tank hole. We would have the tank truck show up because most of them are concrete, not plastic like you see on this particular job. Uh, but we would have the tank truck show up. 
and we would set the tank. Then we got to fill it with water immediately because believe it or not, these tanks will float like a cork in a bucket. If you get a heavy rain and you have a solid rock hole or something like that where the, the soil will retain the water. Uh, so we would plumb the sewer line, we would plumb the septic tank, and then from there we would move on to building the drain field. And depending on what type of drain field, uh, be it uh, leaching chambers, we would start digging trenches, or we would scarify the ground if we're going to put drip tubing down, uh, dig trenches for an LPD for a rock and pipe system. It all just determines. But pretty much the flow is from the house all the way to the very end of the drain field. And then once that is all built, it gets inspected, uh, it gets approved, and then it's covered up with imported soil, usually uh, sandy loam that we bring in, the nice chocolate brown, sandy looking stuff. And we would cover everything up, grade it out, and make it look as nice as we can. After that, then it's going to uh, be a preference with the builder. You know, typically if it's a uh, if it's a house in a nice neighborhood or something like that, they're going to sod over the drain field and the tanks and make it look as as natural as possible. Uh, if not, typically we would uh, be asked to throw seed down. Uh, if there's a slope, we would put curlex down, which is the uh, uh, the retention blanket for the soil. So that is the process that you would have uh, in building a septic system. So some of the common issues that we see in, in construction practices, um, let me just very briefly explain. Uh, anytime you have a house that is going to have a septic system on it, typically plumbers like to plumb the water and the sewer very close together. You cannot do that in any jurisdiction in the state of Texas. The sewer line and the water line must be at least 10 feet apart. So I have come across many, many times and have had to explain to many builders that this particular process, these things have to be at least 10 foot apart. Um, any irrigation, I have come back after I have finished a job and not had a final inspection yet to find out that the landscaper has installed irrigation all around the septic system. You cannot have any irrigation within 10 feet of any component of the septic system. That is the sewer lines, the tanks, and the drain field. You cannot have any of that near there. Um, Pool lines, swimming pool equipment, things of that nature, the same rule applies. You must be 10 feet away. So that's probably the most common uh, issue that I come across. Um, and, and that's, yeah, I can't think of anything else at the moment. So the, the reason why this is an issue is because uh, my license is governed by the TCEQ, which is the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. They set the foundation of all of the rules pertaining to installing a septic system. Now, those set of rules apply, but then each jurisdiction, say Williamson County or Travis County or the LCRA, they are not allowed to go less lenient on those rules, but they are allowed to add their own rules. So that creates a challenge for me because in different jurisdictions, they want different things done. So I have to remember, no matter where I'm at working, that I have to apply those particular rules. The reason why the TCEQ mandated that is because they don't want any cross-contamination. If you were to have a sewer line or a pump line from your septic system intersect with your water line and let's say somebody drove something over and they both broke, you would not want to have any sewage contamination in your water supply going into your house. Now we do everything possible uh, to alleviate that particular issue so that it's never a problem for any of our clients. What the TCEQ says is if you have a, let's say you have a family of four or five and you've had a new septic system installed and you just moved into your house, typically it would be three to five years before you need to have someone come and look in the trash tank. Because you've got to understand, anything you flush and anything you drain down your sinks, you will end up at some point pumping out of this tank. It does not disappear. Uh, they treat sewage, but they don't treat plastics and so on and so forth. So whatever you put in your tank, at some point in the future, that is going to have to be pumped out. Even with a gravity leaching chamber system that does not have any pumps or aerators or anything else like that, a good rule of thumb is three to five years, have somebody come and look at it, look in your tank and determine um, if it needs to be pumped. Another thing that uh, people don't think very much about is while you're washing dishes, if you've cooked you know, something with grease, fried chicken or bacon or what have you, and you're putting that stuff down, uh, down the sink, that is going to end up in your septic tank um, and that will need to be pumped out at some time in the future. That goes up uh, significantly if you have an aerobic system. In the state of Texas, if you have an aerobic drip system or an aerobic spray system, you have to have a maintenance contract. Now, there are maintenance providers out there and you have to sign a contract with them and it ranges in price from two to $400 per year 
And what they're gonna do is they're gonna come out and visit your property three or four times a year, depending on how the contract was written. And what they're supposed to do is come out here and back flush your septic system, check your filters, check your pump, check your alarm, and make sure all of that stuff is working properly. Now, I will say that there's probably some of you folks out there that want to be involved and you'd rather just look at this stuff and take care of it yourself. And I highly recommend that you do that because again, this is one of the most important components that you're gonna have in a house. Uh, for those of you folks that don't wanna have anything to do with it, find a good maintenance guide that's reliable, uh, that's honest and trustworthy, that will come out, look at your system and tell you what needs to be done and then take care of it for you. So what signs would indicate that your septic system is failing or it needs some kind of repair? Um, on a gravity system, you're not going to really see anything because there's no alarms or anything else like that. If you were to see water uh, or liquid pooling at one end of your drain field or pooling right outside of the tank, those can be indicators that a pipe is broken uh, or something has happened. Uh, so I would definitely get those things checked. If you have an aerobic uh, system or a multi-tank system where you have pumps and alarms and things like those involved, then you're going to get both an audio and a visual alarm. You may drive into the driveway one evening, come home from work and you hear this siren going off and there's a, a red flashing light. That's to warn you that there is an issue with your septic system. Those warning lights will be one of two things. Either A, you have high water in the pump tank or B, you have the aerator that has failed. Now on an aerobic septic system, it has a small air pump that is going to pump air into the aerobic chamber 24 7 365 what this is doing is it's providing oxygen for the aerobic bacteria to process the sewage okay you don't have those in a standard type system but you do have those in an aerobic there is an alarm that will go off and let you know if that aerator has failed and has stopped pumping air so you could have uh, an aerator alarm or you could have a high water alarm high water alarms can be kind of complicated but essentially your system is designed to process so many gallons per day. Let's say, for example, this house right here, it's designed to handle, I think it's 420 gallons per day. Well, let's say that, you know, it's a holiday weekend and you have 20 family members that are coming over and they're sleeping on couches and everything else and everybody is showering and so on and so forth. You're using a lot more volume of water and you are going to get an alarm. That doesn't necessarily mean that there is a huge issue. It just means you're using more water than what you're supposed to and your system has to catch up. Now, I will tell you this also, it may catch up and it may be okay, but in certain instances, in certain soils, it will take a lot longer for it to catch up and for it to, to right itself if you overuse and you flood a septic system. It's very important to know how many gallons per day your system is rated at and what you should be using so that you don't abuse and tear up the system because there's no warranty out there that is going to take care of over usage of water. So the question is, are there any good tips for a homeowner uh, to maintain his septic system? Again, I think there's two types of people. There's there's people that want to uh, be involved and they, they don't have a problem opening up a lid and looking in their tank. For instance, if you look in a pump tank, uh, you'll see the floats that are on the float tree for the pump. Um, if there's a very high volume of water in there, then you'll see that your alarm is on because both of those floats have, have lifted up. Um, for a homeowner, uh, as far as your normal usage, don't overuse your system. Um, what I tell folks is, especially if you have a garbage disposal, let's just say you're peeling potatoes, all right? So you peel potatoes in the sink, grab the majority of that and throw it in the trash can. The, you know, a little bit that you drain is not that big a deal. But again, keep in mind, anything that you flush or you put down a sink is gonna end up in this tank and it can cause issues. Um, female products, um, that is a big no-no. You don't wanna flush any female products into a septic system. Um, dispose of that in other ways. Uh, those can clog up filters. Uh, it can cause pump failures, uh, so on and so forth. So you really only want sewage and water going into your septic system. Okay, so the question is how can landscaping affect um, your septic system and planning? Um, again, if you're doing landscaping, typically, you know, landscapers, if they're putting down sod, grass, so on and so forth, they want to, uh, they want to have irrigation. Again, you cannot have any irrigation components, pipe, spray heads, any of that within 10 feet, 10 feet of any component of your septic system. Um, you cannot make any major cuts in the ground within 25 feet of a septic system. So let's say, for example, on this particular property, let's say the drain field is going to end right here where I'm standing. 
Now, if you decided that you wanted to excavate this land and drop this whole area and build a wall here, that would be a huge no-no in this particular instance because what you're doing is you're opening up the ground where this affluent can, it can perk down through the ground and then it can come out the wall and then you would have sewage leaching out of your wall. So there are certain instances um, where landscaping, landscaping should absolutely be discussed uh, with the uh, septic contractor so that everybody is on the same page. And let me say one other thing also. Um, it's very, very important that the plumber plums according to the plan and that not only does he do that, he comes out of the house as shallow as possible and meets all of his grades in the slab, but he comes out as shallow as possible uh, with the sewer line because again, elevations of everything below that are all dictated by the elevation of that sewer line. What environmental impact can be associated with your septic system installation? Uh, again, we go back to the TCEQ rules. Let's say that you have a pond on your property. There is a certain setback that you have to be away from the pond. Um, if you have Lake Austin waterfront property or you're on Lake Travis and waterfront property, there are setbacks that are in place because they've done studies to determine that, okay, this soil here will handle the affluent. It won't migrate. It won't leak down into the lake or the river or your pond or anything like that. So there are rules in place um, and, and they all play a part in both the design and the installation of the septic system. What new technology has come about in the past, say 20 or so years uh, in doing what we do? Um, they're, they're always making improvements. They, they make aerobic systems uh, work better. They have come up with this drip tech system, which is what we are gonna use on this particular job, where it doesn't actually aerobically treat the sewage but it very, very fine filters it. One thing that you have to understand is that when raw liquid, raw sewage liquid goes into the ground, it typically only takes about 10 feet for that water to be clean water again. So it filters through the rock, the dirt, the soil, the sand, the clay, whatever it is, and it only takes about 10 feet for that to be clean water again. How have septic systems changed in, the, in 20 years? I remember the first year uh, being down here working over in a neighborhood in the Laga Vista area. Um, lots of good soil over there where we were at in this particular neighborhood, lots of gravity systems. Um, we did a lot of low pressure dose. Low pressure dose is basically a gravel and pipe system that is pumped. The entire system is pressurized and that's how it doses uh, the effluent over a large area. Um, there were uh, certain things back then, like you could do that in solid rock and then have sand and gravel and, and get rid of it that way. Uh, they've pretty much outlawed putting it in, in rock it seems to me that aerobic systems are, are more frequently used, but again, it all depends on the soil and, and where you're at. One thing I will say is that here in the Austin, Texas area, uh, we also have the Edwards Aquifer. And so it is a large underground aquifer and the counties have gotten more strict on how they want sewage processed. Uh, and the, the big push now nowadays is nitrogen reduction. And so certain systems have nitrogen reduction and certain systems have to have an additional tank. Um, and that eliminates or removes as much nitrogen from the sewage flow as possible. So that's one thing that I have definitely seen in the last several years that they have gotten more strict about. Again, it's all about protecting the environment. It's about protecting our water supply, especially as we have many, many more people moving here to the central Texas area. Uh, we have to, uh, protect what we have here. Okay, so the question is, are, any, are, are there any additives or things like that that you should add to your septic system? I will tell you this, the TCEQ did a study uh, a number of years ago, and don't quote me because I don't remember what year it was, but I think they tested 80 plus products uh, that were on the market that's supposed to help uh, reduce solids in your tank and so on and so forth. Now there is one product that is, uh, it's a giant bottle of bacteria and that bacteria dumped in a septic tank will help uh, the process better. But there's there, there are many, many more products on the market and they have determined that they're really practically useless. The other thing that I'd like to say is that for anybody watching this video, maybe you're uh, in a Northern state or you're in on the West Coast or the East Coast, uh, I'm being very specific here to the state of Texas and in Central Texas in and around the Austin area, again, that I've been installing septic systems here for the last 24 years. It's how can a homeowner uh, determine if he's got a problem or troubleshoot a problem uh, before having to call a professional out to take a look. 
Again, if you're one of those folks that does not mind getting a drill and unscrewing one of these lids and looking down in your pump tank, uh, for example, if you have an alarm on, you can tell real quick um, what the problem is if you have a high water condition or if a float has come off the float tree and it's just floating, even at, at the very bottom, that may turn your alarm on. Um, if you're willing to do those things, then it, it's really simple. It would take you five minutes to, to look in your system and figure out what the issue is. Um, you could come outside and if you have an aerobic tank that has uh, both an aerator and a pump and alarm, um, the first thing I would do is I, I would look at the alarm. And by the way, let me also say that every control panel out there, you will have an audio and a visual alarm. There is a switch on the side of the control panel that you can flip to mute the alarm because that's obviously the most annoying, right? But the, the light will always stay on. Now, I want to say one thing else. Um, in my 24 years of experience, thunderstorms that come through, electrical storms, so on and so forth, they can wreak havoc on control panels for septic systems. So I get a lot of these calls. And the first thing I tell folks is, okay, look, what I want you to do is I want you to go out there and open up your control panel and I want you to turn your breakers off. Turn your breakers off and then turn the breakers back on. And if that clears the problem, then it was just an electrical issue. If it does not clear the problem, then you need to look in the tank. You need to check the area to make sure that it is still pumping air. Um, and if you do those couple of things, you can, you could fix it yourself, or at least you'll know exactly what it's going to be. And I'm happy to take any questions or emails or anything else. If anybody has any, any problems or, or questions about that. If you have found yourself in a position where you are going to install a septic system or have a septic system installed for you, then what I would do is I would think about the future. So for example, if you're going to build a house, that septic system is going to be designed for that house, square footage, number of bedrooms. But let's say that you're thinking in the future, you want to put a swimming pool back here and then you want to put a cabana. Maybe you want to have a little kitchen or you want to have another toilet. It makes perfect sense on the front side to design that septic system to accommodate what you want to do in the future. It's not going to add tens of thousands of dollars to the price but it will allow you to then just plumb in whatever you're going to do in the future and everything is already done for you. Um, it gets very difficult, for example, if, if, you, uh, if you have built a house and then you decide you wanna put a pool or you wanna put a cabana in, or let's say you wanna put a garage apartment in, okay? Those cause major issues because again, the system has been designed for the gallons per day based on this house, not on that additional apartment or that additional pool cabana. So. Think long and hard about what you're going to do with this property uh, in the future. And I think that if you take some, some time and some, and some consideration, discuss this with the engineer or the sanitarian that is going to be designing your septic system so that you can alleviate as many issues in the future. It's just better business sense. It will end up cheaper for you and you'll have a much better product. Don, thank you for your experience, for your time, and uh, very important information. Yes, you are my pleasure. Right,